Good morning. Welcome to the Williams County Community Garden Associations. We're at April's Greenhouse this morning. April's is south of Bryan and about a mile south of Route 6. Right where 15 and 127 split, right in that Y is where you'll find April. The greenhouse is open on Monday through Friday from 9 to 7, on Saturday from 9 to 5, and on Sunday from 11 to 3. Let's go inside and find April. Here we are inside the greenhouse with April Smith. She's the owner and operator of April's Greenhouse. Good morning, April. Good morning. It's a beautiful day out today. It's not bad. And hopefully <laughs> it's going to start getting warmer so we can get some of these plants sold and get yeah. them in the ground. So how long have you been gardening? Um, I'm going to say my whole life. Uh, with my grandma as a kid in the summers and then I got a part-time job in a greenhouse in high school. I'm going to go with 93 and I've spent every spring in a greenhouse since. And when did you start your greenhouse business? Uh, so I started at Davis's as a part-time high school help. Um, then I went to college for a couple years, got an associate's degree from Ohio State, came back and started this in 2000. So you've been doing this for a while? A couple years. <laughs> <laughs> so do you grow all of your own plants? Uh, about 90% of the plants, yes. I do have to get in some extra hanging baskets for Mother's Day. But yeah, 90% of the things in the pots and the flats, I start from seed or small cuttings. Wow, that's a lot of plants. <laughs> it takes a lot of time and a lot of uh, friends and family power. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good that you've got friends and family that can it help is. you out. They can be bribed. <laughs> so are you open all summer or... Uh, all spring, basically, until I run out of plants, which is usually the end of June. Uh, last year was a little different, but who knows what this year will be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, usually I have some plants clear through June, and then July, not a lot, and then August, uh, sweet corn, tomatoes, cucumbers, a little farmer's market. Oh, that's cool. And what advice would you give to first-time gardeners? Uh, just try it. Don't be nervous. Don't be scared. Just try something. You'll fall in love with it. And what are your best sellers? What are your best selling vegetables? Best selling vegetables, uh, tomatoes and peppers, definitely. Green peppers and uh, the big boy and the early girl tomatoes are, are big sellers. And here we've got a couple of tomatoes. We've got a, a big boy and an early girl and I personally know that these are both delicious tomatoes because I've grown them both. So they're the big boys, I really like. The early girls are good because they they come early. They're they're your first tomato in this in the spring, and yep. everybody's always wanting waiting for that first homegrown tomato. That first BLT. And peppers. Yes, green bell peppers and red bell peppers, but green's probably the biggest seller. Yeah, these are California wonders. I grow these a lot. My dad used to grow California wonders. That's when the old I was standard. a kid. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what about flowers? Uh, flowers, as far as in the flats, petunias and impatience are, are what I grow the most of. Um, but what's really taken off last couple of years is all the new varieties of petunias. Oh. Um, the black ones, there's one called night sky, which looks like a night sky. There's so many different colors um, that are just new and exciting. Yeah. I didn't think petunias would get new and exciting, <laughs> but they did. <laughs> yeah, I bought some of the black ones this year, and yeah. I'm going to plant those in a pot around the... Um, uh, hot lip salvia. That's oh, that's one yes. of my favorites. Yes. And I love where I see we're standing here right behind the calabrocoa. That's one of my favorites. I always plant a big pot of calabrocoa. Yep, that's a that's a sure easy grower. Takes the full so hot sun. Yeah, blooms all summer. So hummingbirds like it. Hummingbirds love it. <laughs> yep. Now I also see you've got a sign back here yes. about your wave petunias. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, the Nay Park is installing a splash pad. Um, and so I am donating one dollar for every wave petunia sold to the fundraising for the splash pad. Wow, that's great. That's that's good that we can help it's, each other out and help yes, the community. And absolutely, and they's just right up the road. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, we thank you for giving us a little of your time. No and problem. We'll get this on the internet and try to get some people in here to buy your plants. All right, sounds it's, good. It's supposed <laughs> to warm up. I hear so people are yes. going to be getting ready to, to get out and get some plants in the ground. I've been biting at the bit to get my tomatoes <laughs> and peppers planted and 
Last year, if you remember, I planted too early. I had to come back and buy yep, some more. <laughs> that happens a lot. Yes. I didn't do that. I didn't do that this year. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, the snow is over. <laughs> I sure hope so. Okay. Thanks right. a lot. Thank you. Uh -huh. Bye bye. Here we are in the in the middle of the peppers. Everything here is peppers. I'm surrounded by them. And over here, we've got some jalapenos. Everybody likes jalapenos. I think these are probably, other than the sweet bells, these are probably one of the all-time favorites is the jalapeno. We have poblanos or ancho peppers. This is called a gypsy pepper, a gypsy sweet. We've got, let's see, we've got candy cane red. See, it looks like these are all sweet peppers on, the, on this side. And she has one here I've never heard of. It's called an ivory pepper. I've never seen those before. And then we've got orange ones up here. Uh, we've got Hungarian hot wax. And this is a large jalapeno. So it's another variety of jalapeno. So she's got, looks like just about any, any kind of pepper you could ask for. She probably has it here. Okay, now we're in the tomato section and I am surrounded by tomatoes. These are Roma tomatoes. And Roma tomatoes are what I call Italian tomatoes. They are more of a pear shape. Some people call them pear tomatoes. They're good for making sauce and salsa. So these are Roma tomatoes. These are, this is a 4th of July slicer tomato. And I believe these are supposed to, to start bearing tomatoes by the 4th of July. That's why it's called the 4th of July tomato. And that's a nice looking plant there. Uh, this is a, a pineapple tomato. I don't believe I've ever had one of these. It's an heirloom tomato and it's red and yellow. Okay, here we are in the greens section, and I'm holding here a dinosaur kale. This kale gets rather large, I believe. It says up to 36 inches high and 24 inches wide, so that's that's pretty good size. This is just a, a curly kale, so she's got her kales. And getting into the brassicas, we have a red cabbage. This is called stonehead cabbage. This is early flat Dutch cabbage but they look nice. These are all perennial flowers. I know we're mostly at the community garden. We grow vegetables. Flowers are nice too. They, they pull in the pollinators. This is one that we have in our yard. We have, I have a very large pollinator garden in my backyard. We grow perennials for hummingbirds, bees, and butterflies. This is a black night butterfly bush. It is one of the best perennial plants you can have to attract butterflies. They absolutely love it. So that's a good one. Here we have an echinacea. This is wildberry, pow powwow wildberry, and I've got a couple of these in my garden. They have a, a really deep pink flower on them, and they, they're not a real tall echinacea. They're a little bit shorter, about two feet tall. So if you need something a little shorter, because the purple cone flowers, the traditional native purple cone flower, it gets about three or four feet tall. Let's see, I think we have a salvia down here. This is a blue queen salvia, and I got one of these last year from April. It got huge, it, and this year I noticed it's even bigger, so uh, they're really nice. The, the bees and the butterflies like those. Another one is lobelia. Uh, this is a queen Victoria lobelia. It's a red lobelia. The butterflies and hummingbirds really like this one too. And here she has a table of succulents. I don't know what any of these are because I like succulents, but I can never remember the names. But I do know I have one of these. Mine would fill up this pot and hang over the edges, but I've had it for a couple of years. So that's, that one grows really nice indoors. This one looks like a hens and chicks. And we have some, a big tub of hens and chicks in our backyard that we got from Richard's mother, who got them from great grandmother. They are descendants from plants that go back into the early 1900s, and we're still growing them. And like I said, we've got a big tub of hens and chicks. When we were talking to April about the petunias, she mentioned that the new colors and varieties of petunias that were coming out. The, what she specifically mentioned the black petunia, which is this one here. And 
I just think they're gorgeous. Like I said I bought some to put in a in a pot with a salvia, and this is the one that she said she really liked. It's called Night Sky, and you can see it looks like the the night sky with the stars. So those are really pretty. We could spend probably an hour here showing you all of April's flowers because she just has flowers everywhere. So if you like flowers, come on out to April's greenhouse south of Bryan. Check out her flowers and her vegetables. She's just got so many nice plants out here. Give some of our local people your business. Until next time, I'm Kathy and we'll see you in the next one.